living in Thailand, I'm pretty sure that we're all familiar with this gesture. This gesture is a Y, and Y translates as a greeting, a salutation, or a paying of respect. In traditional Thai medicine, there's a very important practice called the Y Kru. So Y is a salutation, greeting, paying of respect, and Kru is the word for guru or teacher. So the Y Kru is the practice of paying our respect to the teachers, where we honor tradition lineage, where we develop and establish a relationship with the teachers, the masters that have preserved, protected, and passed on the knowledge from generation to generation so it can reach us and enrich us today. So I would like to start a little five element class today with the Y Kru, a way of a, look at it as a sort of an invocation to call for the intelligence of those that walk the path before us and may they grace us with their presence, with their wisdom and assistance in our learning process. So find a nice, comfortable sitting position and bring your hands together into a Y. This gesture symbolizes the merging of duality. Bring your hands together in front of your heart center. If you happen to be familiar with the mantra, with the kata, with the white blue, feel free to chant along. If not, just be open and receptive to the vibration of the words. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambhutasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambhutasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambhutasa Om Namo Shiva Gosilasa Aham Karuni Kosapasatanam Osata Tipamantam Papaso Suryachantam Omalapato Pakasesi Vantami Pandito Sumetaso Baroka Domena Homi Om Namo Shiva Go Silasa Aham Karuni Ko Sapasatana O Satati Pamantan Papaso Surya Chantan Gomalapato Akasesi Vantami Pandito Sumetaso Arroka Somena Homi Om Namo Shiva Go Silasa Aham Karuni Ko Sapasatana O Sata Tipamantan Papaso Surya Chantan Omalapato Pakasesi Vantami Pandito Sumetaso Arroka Somena Homi Naha Nawa Roka Payati Vina Santi Naha Nawa Roka Payati Vina Santi Naha Nawa Roka Payati so today we're going to talk about the five elements and we're going to look at the five elements as a sort of a language system, a way of understanding individuality. So in traditional medicine, individuality is really important. And it's basically this understanding that even though there's over 7 billion people on the planet, there isn't one person that is exactly like you. And this uniqueness, this individuality, plays a really important role, especially when it comes to health and healing. 
if you just take a moment to look around the room, you can see that, yes, we all have two eyes, a nose, a mouth, gladly two arms, two legs, but still there's obvious differences amongst all of us here. And it's these little nuances, these little distinctions that turn a substance that, that can be absolute medicine for me, be absolute poison for you. So traditional medicine uses the system of the five elements to understand that individuality. Any idea what these elements might be? Anyone heard about the five elements before? Water, fire, Water, fire. Water, earth, earth, air, air. Ether. ether, space. Okay, so let's go from the most dense, the most gross, to the most subtle. What would be the most obvious, the most dense, the most gross of all of these five elements? Earth. 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 So we're gonna have earth. By the way, I don't speak English, I speak travelish. So for all the English speakers in the room, if you see any spelling mistake, by all means, correct me. So after Earth, what would be the next one? Water. Water. After water? So we're moving from the most dense to the most subtle. Earth, water, fire right in the middle. Air. I'm gonna call it wings. And once we get to this element, I'll explain why. Okay. And the fifth element? Ether or space. Now, in Buddhism, they consider a sixth element. What do you think that might be? In Buddhism, there really isn't a notion of spirit, so to speak, or soul. It's consciousness. So a lot of schools pair the element of space and the element of consciousness together. And in the words of the Buddha, a sentient being is made of solidity, liquidity, heat, mobility, space and consciousness. This is what makes a sentient being. To understand the elements, we need to understand their qualities because we're never really going to meet an element in its purest form. This is because the elements actually don't exist unto themselves. They're basically experiences. And what we're looking here is like a sort of a spectrum of life. So to understand the elements, we need to understand their qualities. So let's start with Earth, because it being the most dense, it's perhaps the easiest place to start. Yeah. So before we go into the qualities of the elements, I would like you to at least be open to the idea that this is what you are made of. If one of these elements wasn't present, you wouldn't be having this experience. You wouldn't be who you are. Mm -hmm. So these are aspects that are part of your makeover. So let's start with the element of Earth. So for a moment, I invite you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and feel into the element of Earth in you. Feeling, breathing, smiling into that Earth element. And as you connect with that Earth element, Tell me what qualities come to you. What do you notice? What becomes evident? And go ahead and tell me. Gravity. Gravity. <laughs> Let's look at qualities. So. Grounded. Yeah. Grounded. Yes, stable. Grounded. Solid. Stable. Nourishing. Uh, nourishing can be, to a certain extent, all of the elements sort of have a nourishing role. Yeah. So grounded, solid, stable. Can we give it a weight? Heavy. Heavy. What else? Basic. Sorry? Basic. 
basic, basic, uh, what do you mean with that? Ground, grounded, yeah, yeah that grounded. Uh, can we give it a speed? Would it be on the fast side or on the slow side? Slow. 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 Another word for that. Rigid? Rigid. Hmm. Rather than thinking about qualities, uh, rather than going to an intellectual process, really feel what do you think would be the earth element in your body? Things in your body that are grounded, solid, stable, heavy. Legs? Bones. What was that? Bones. Bones. Muscles. Mm -hmm. yeah. The heaviest, most dense, mm -hmm. most solid. What would be the earth element in this room? The foundation. Carry on. Point it. Let me see. The stone, the wood. The wood, the pillars, mm -hmm. the roof, the floor the structure and that would be perhaps the key quality for this element earth creates structure look at what the bones and the muscles do this musculoskeletal system in our body creates the structure of our body make sense so let's drop the element of earth for a moment close your eyes and Feel into the water element in you. Feel into all the liquid systems in your body. Breathing, feeling, and smiling at that element of earth in your body. And tell me what qualities do you notice? Movement. Again? Movement. Movement. Fluid. Adapt. Fluids, adaptable, Calm. soft, can we give it a weight? Heavy side or on the light side? Everyone in agreement with that? <laughs> if I pour water on the floor and if the floor is not even, we know that water is going to flow to the lowest point. Right? So water is heavy. It's not as heavy as earth, but it's still heavy. And you'll start to notice that elements that are close to each other, they share qualities, which gives us an indication that what we're looking at here is a spectrum, spectrum of light. So we got fluid, adaptable, soft, heavy. What else? Feel into the water in you. Changed by its surroundings. Right, we have a word for that. If I put water in this cup, it shapes itself as the cup. If I put it in the jar, adaptable. what is adaptable? Um. Interesting if you interact as much as me talking. It carries things. Water is sort of like the universal solvent, the universal conduit. Water transports. If you see, if you look at the major cities in the, in the on the planet, they were built, generally speaking, next to a big body of water. Uh, the vast majority of transportation on the planet is, does take place through body of water. If we look at the water systems in our body, what would be the systems in our body that are predominantly water elements? Urine. Urine, sure. What else? Blood. Blood is another very important fluid system. Lymph. 
if you look at what these systems do in the body, they are transportation systems. Yeah? Blood transports oxygen and nutrients to the cells. The lymph transports toxic waste out of the cells. So they are transportation systems. There's also a very interesting work by a Japanese scientist, uh, maybe you heard of him, Dr. Matsuro Emoto. He had this work on water where you kind of prove that water has memory, has a capacity to retain the vibrational imprint. Are you familiar with this work? We had different samples of water that you would expose to different stimulus and then you would freeze the samples of water and you would photograph the crystals formed as the molecules were freezing. And what he saw is that uh, samples of water that were exposed to what we could call a positive stimulus like uh, having a monk coming and blessing the water, uh, people whispering words like, I love you, thank you, you're beautiful. These samples will form incredible geometrical patterns, while the samples exposed to what we call negative stimulus, like people shouting words of abuse, telling, fuck you, I hate you, you're horrible, they would form really incoherent and ugly formations. So again, an interesting take on the capacity that water has to transport to retain vibrational imprint. So fluids, adaptable, soft, heavy. We have got adaptable twice, I don't know why. Uh, let's come up with a few more qualities. More emotional because it can transport or it can be a great vehicle for emotions to move through, but all of the elements can be associated with particular emotions. Absorbent. Absorbent. Is it going to be absorbent or absorbent? B. Yeah. B? Yeah. Thank you. Mm. We need that for more salt. Life-giving. Yes, and yet, so are all the other elements. Mm, there's an interesting quality to water, which is rhythm. In Latin, R-H denotes fluid. So Latin words with R-H denote fluid, such as hemorrhage, Amoroids, and they all denote fluid retention or fluid uh, quality. Um, okay, that's good for now. Let's drop the element of water, close the eyes, take a deep breath in. Connecting with the fire element in you. Breathing, feeling, smiling into that intelligence of fire. Tell me what qualities do you notice? What becomes evident to you? Yes. No extra points for this. <laughs> Determined. Determined. Yes, let's see if we can refine that quality. What does determined mean to you? Like it, it pursues its path without uh, any. It's not like water that will adapt and flow, it really pursues Focus. It's focused, it's, yeah, persevering. Mm -hmm. okay. Intense, intense. 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 Uh, yes, can and like definitely give it. Heat, focus, intense, fluid. Can we give it a color? Red. Any other tones? Orange. Red, orange. Yellow. Yeah. Good. Destructive. While, to a certain extent, yes, as far as creation, or as far as consciousness is concerned, 
there's no good or bad, and destruction does have a negative connotation, because you could also say fire creates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so is there like a word that we can use that is much more... Consumes. Consumes. It consumes. Devouring. What was that? And that's the key word for fire. Fire transforms. Sure, that transformation could be perceived as destruction or as creation. In order for us to be sitting in this beautiful wooden house, a bunch of trees were destroyed or transformed. Expansion? Expansion? Okay, so that leads us to direction of movement. movement. Can we predict the direction of movement for fire? No? Okay, but that's the next element. And that's exactly what makes a wildfire wild. It's not fire. If I was to turn off this fan, close all the windows and turn a uh, candle on, that flame is going to be pretty steady. It's going to show tones red, orange, it's going to produce heat. Yeah? It's focused and intense. It's kind of very difficult not to notice the fire. There's an intensity to it, both in witnessing it, and if I touch it, it's definitely going to be intense. Um, the flame has a fluidity to it. And if there's a fluidity, there's a movement. So what are the directions of movement we can observe in a, in a candle flame, for example? There's two directions of movement. It's rising. If I was to light that curtain there on fire, we know that the fire is going to ascend and it's going to spread out. So it's rising and spreading. can see that with the heat rash in the tropics that's something very very common you see a heat rash that rises to the surface of the skin and it spreads across the skin if you go out and you drink too much tequila do your feet get red what gets red your face why because heat rises what happens to your obnoxiousness Spread. <laughs> Fire is rising and spreading. Look at the CEO. Huh? Usually, these are people that are very focused, intense, goal-oriented. They have a gift of fire. They want to rise to the top of their field and spread their fame across the world. So you start to see these qualities everywhere. Huh? Can we give it a shape? If I was to draw a candle, a little fire, a little flame, it's kind of pointy, it's sharp. Wherever we see sharpness in nature, it shows quite an abundance of fire element. Mm. So, can you think of a food that has a lot of the qualities that we mentioned here? Chili. Spice. Chili. It's red. <laughs> it's hot. Uh, yeah, you eat a lot of it, it's definitely, you're going to experience some fluidity. <laughs> it will melt things away. Uh, it's definitely intense. Rising, spreading. Yeah. Look at the durian, for example. Yeah. Intense smell, in taste, uh, in, both in taste and uh, in the sense of smell. It's very spiky. And it shows a lot of fire. What would be the system in our body that would be predominantly fire? Very good. Digestion. Our ability to transform food into life force energy that can be used and utilized by the body. You can also say the, men, the more mathematical, analytical aspect of our mind. This also relates to fire. Is this making sense so far? Then yeah. let's drop the fire element. Close your eyes. <coughs> Bring your attention inwards and feel into the element of wind. And as you connect with this element, tell me what qualities become evident to you. Powerful. All these elements can be expressed in a powerful way. Think of an earthquake. 
that's earth in its full power. Or think of a tsunami, uh, think of a fire, think of a cyclone, hurricane. These are all very powerful expressions of these elements. Movement. Movement. That's the key word for equality or wind. Wherever we see movement, wind element is present. And this is actually the main re well, there's a few reasons why I choose to call this element wind instead of air. If you look at the Sanskrit word, because many systems use the five element system, uh, yoga, Ayurveda, traditional time medicine, uh, the word for wind in Sanskrit is vayu, and that translates directly as wind. The word in Pali is vayu, is the same. The word in Thai is lom, which translates as wind. And while wind, while air can be stagnant, wind cannot. And movement being the primary quality of this element is a lot more accurate to refer to it as wind rather than air. So if you see it in books or other teachers talking about this element as element of air, just make that mental note that actually in the traditional texts it's referred to it as wind. So movement, yes, what are the qualities? Spirituality and connecting with something bigger? Yes, to, some, to a certain extent I agree because we're moving from the most solid, dense, tangible into the most subtle. So we're definitely entering a realm of the unseen. This is the one element, the first element that we cannot perceive with our sense of sight. So this is all invisible realm that, uh, that falls into this category. Same with radio waves, Wi-Fi, all these unseen forces that we can measure that are around. In traditional Thai medicine, there's a whole category of imbalances related to spirits, spirit imbalances, ghost imbalances, and they fall into this element. So like uncontainable? That's probably, probably a little bit ahead mm -hmm. in the spectrum. It's a bit similar to water because it's also moving. So, while we can get all of these elements moving, movement in itself is wind. So, the earth moving is... A, look at it this way. We are dissecting the elements for the sake of understanding them. But in nature, that's not how it works. The elements are constantly interconnected. Inter, it's an interrelation, no thing. <laughs> right? We're just dissecting, dissecting them for the sake of understanding them. So if you see earth moving, think of a big boulder on top of a mountain. It's heavy, it's solid, it's stable. It takes all of us and a huge effort to push and push until we get it moving. Uh, the movement itself is wind. Now, as the rock moves down the mountain, we can predict this direction of movement. It's going to pretty much move in a straight line. It's going to bulldoze everything that is on its way. Water, if we drop water on top of a mountain, it will find its way down the mountain. It will adapt to the earth container, whatever the trajectory is, whatever obstacles it finds, it will adapt, flow around or over or under or evaporate, condense and rain and carry on its path towards the lowest point. Fire, we know that's going to rise and it's going to spread. And that movement in itself is wind. Because if you put a dome on top of a flame, it will extinguish itself. It needs that <coughs> movement to exist. Now, can we predict the direction of movement of wind? Is that a quality? Predictable. <laughs> Can we give it a weight? So 
somehow I've, somehow is probably seeking balance, but uh, how is that balance going to pan out is very it's almost impossible to predict. Mm -hmm. So active, 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 yes. active dynamic, yeah, yeah. dynamic with a wife, yeah. Transparent. Form formless. Formless. Can we give it a speed? Respiratory system. Okay, so what is the system in our body that mostly relates to the element of wind? Respiratory system. Are we all in agreement? <laughs> okay. If we look at the structure of the lungs, the lungs are very mucousy. They're very moist. In fact, a lot of the lung imbalances are mucus imbalances. What, would, what element would that be? Water. Let's look at what the lungs do, what the respiratory system do. It transports oxygen in and it transports carbon dioxide out. What is an element that is really strong as far as transportation goes? Water. So even though the, I hear that in every single five element class, there's another system in the body that is absolutely responsible for motricity, movement, is by far the fastest system in our body. Nervous system? Nervous system. If we're looking at the mind, it would be the more abstract, creative aspect of our mind, so more like right brain hemisphere. Whereas fire is more or left brain. Right. Yeah. Great. Let's drop the element of wind for now. Close your eyes. Bring your attention inwards. Connect with the element of space within you. Feeling, breathing, smiling into that element. And as you connect with the element of space, tell me what qualities do you notice? What becomes evident to you? Sorry? Infinite. Absence of the other element. Absence space. of the other elements. <laughs> it's like a space in between. Just yeah. Say it's it's the field of activity for all of the other elements. It's sort of like the playground or the canvas, the empty canvas for all the other different colors to be expressed. Stillness. 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 Yes, could go with that. Can we give it a form? Only. It's also formless, therefore weightless. Can we measure it? No, it's infinite. It's immeasurable. Seeing how it's become... These ones were very easy to, to connect with the qualities. And this one is becoming a little bit more subtle, abstract. Zest. So we haven't yet touched the keyword. Present. Key Present. Present. You are so close. That's half of the quality. <laughs> Let's put it like this, guys. Let's say we have point A. And we have point B. 
Now we want to move from point A to point B. So earth, we know that it moves in a straight line, it's linear, right? Water, we know that it's going to flow, move in a fluid, spirally, circular manner until it gets there. Fire, it's going to rise and spread until it gets there. Wind, God knows, it'll be all over the place and by some miraculous force it will arrive at its destination. What about space? How does space move from point A to point B? It's already there. Do we have a name for that? You, you got half of the word already. Omnipresent. It's everywhere. Omnipresent transcends time and space. One of the voice relates to the space element. The sound vibration travels to space. That's the reason why we use mantras. That's why we use the white crew as a way to connect with teachers, regardless if they are on the other side of the planet or if they were alive a hundred years ago. Because through that element of space, through that fabric, we can use sound vibration to connect with that data, that intelligence. So what would be the aspect in us that would be space on Consciousness. Now it depends on your belief system, right? So you could say soul, spirit, if you follow a more Buddhist perspective, then consciousness. What about thought? Thought, thinking? Is that, is thinking, that? what kind of thinking? So here's the more rational mm. mind. Good thing. Uh, this imagine, is the imagination. More imagination, intuition, mm. being open to that consciousness, mm. guidance. Mm. Um, so in a way, a more, uh, it's almost like a, there's a balance between these uh, two hemispheres and you tap into something that is beyond your small bubble of self. Does it make sense, guys? Now, if you just look, I don't know if you can decipher my handwriting, but if you look at this board <coughs> and you see these five elements and you see some of their qualities, there are more qualities to each of the elements, but just by looking at the board, do you see one or two elements that you recognize in yourself a lot of these qualities. Maybe a couple of elements where you go like, yep, I definitely got an abundance of that. Sure. What is it for you? Fire. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And earth. Fire and earth. What about you? Water and air. Yeah. And what I really like about using the five elements is that you really, the world all of a sudden, you look at it from a different perspective. I don't know if you notice. Know Ariz is like, what is your predominant element? Fire. <laughs> what is your predominant element? Water. <laughs> and you start to see these qualities manifested everywhere. Yeah? There was a, an intensity, focus, uh, to the point. There was a softness, a gentleness, just in the speech. You know? So let's just go around the room a little bit. Whoever wants to tell what element or elements, it could be more than one, that you know, that you recognize, yes, I do have a lot of that. Earth. Earth? Earth. Earth. Mm -hmm. Space and fire. Now, let us, let's understand that we all have these five elements. We're all born with these uh, elements and their qualities, but there is a predominance. The way that these elements are uh, built 
in us. It's what makes us absolutely unique. So understanding our predominant, our elemental predominance uh, is basically understanding our gift to the world. Because we are born with a certain abundance of one or two or three elements. This means that this abundance of qualities translates as the gift that we have to offer to the world. Because we have an abundance of it. But everything in life comes with a price. So if this is your gift, because it's what you have in abundance, it also means this is the element that's going to go out of balance the easiest. So this is the element that you need to watch out and keep in balance. Make sense? Your strongest element is your gift to the world. It's also the one that you need to watch out and keep balanced. So let's use fire, because it's right in the middle and it's obvious enough to understand. If you have quite a gift of fire, and uh, therefore you have a lot of these qualities, one thing that happens with our strongest element is that we're always going to be drawn to death. We're always going to be drawn to qualities that are familiar to us. It's just our, it's our comfort zone where we feel at home. So if you have a lot of fire, it's probably quite natural <laughs> that you're going to gravitate towards people that are strong, intense, like-minded. And that you like intense experiences. Probably you're the kind of person that adds chili to your already spicy curry every single time. Yeah. Probably the person that uh, goes for really intense exercise experiences. What kind of yoga do you think a fire dominant person would love to go to? Bikram. Bikram yoga. It's lock yourself in a heated up room. Yeah. Ashtanga yoga, right? What kind of yoga do you think these guys would love? Yeah. 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 Yoga. I mean, these are the guys that show up in a yoga class with a t-shirt that says just here for Shavasana <laughs> <laughs> because people are just drawn towards their natural element now in the long run this is not what's going to bring them to balance because like increases like so if I have a lot of fire and I live in a really hot climate and I eat really spicy food and I engage in really intense conversations and activities uh, and then, uh, and I practice, yeah, Ashtanga Yoga, Bikram Yoga. Basically, I am adding a lot of these qualities to a system that already has an abundance of these qualities. So if you have fire and you add more fire to the fire, what are you going to get? Burnt. Not rocket science. Burnt. You're going to get even more fire. Mm -hmm. Like increases like. So another way of looking at it is that if like increases like, opposites balance. We know this instinctively. If you burn yourself with the fire, in the fire, what do you do? You dip your hand in the cool water. If your soup is very hot, what do you do? You blow. By the way, that's another quality for wind. Use the element of wind to cool down your hot soup. So while you might be very drawn to the very soft yin yoga class if you are earth or water dominant person actually you would really benefit by a more dynamic practice maybe ashtanga maybe like a fast vinyasa something that it involves more movement more transformative qualities uh, that moves all this stagnation right? if you have a lot of these qualities you would definitely benefit from a few yin yoga classes calming relaxing grounding now, in the beginning, that's not going to feel natural. It's actually going to feel really quite the opposite. I think. That's just driving me crazy. And this is a very modern notion that we have. We all heard this. Focus on your strengths. This is a very modern perspective. A traditional or holistic perspective would say exactly the opposite. Focus on your weaknesses. Your strengths are already your strengths. You don't need to, fo to focus on those. Focus on the qualities that are not as predominant in you. That is what in the long run is going to move you in the direction of balance. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. yeah. Any question? Yeah. Yes. Does it change over your lifetime? So you say you, know, you have predominantly yes, in this, in this wind. Mm -hmm. and then
The answer to that's probably a little bit out of the scope of this <laughs> lecture, but uh, you have an elemental core constitution. In Ayurveda, they call that uh, Pakruti. Um, in, in Thai medicine, they just call it core elemental constitution. And that's what you are born with. And that's basically your blueprint for health. Now, as you are exposed to life, you are exposed to elements, you are exposed to experiences, and these experiences have different qualities. And that can change, you can definitely deviate from your blueprint for health. And that's what we call the present imbalance. In Ayurveda, they call that the Vikruti. So, understanding your core constitution allows you to have a good idea of what is balance for me, because this is really about understanding individuality. This is about understanding that balance for me might be very different from what balance means to you. So understanding our core constitution gives a really good baseline and understanding for that. And it also allows you to understand how far have we deviated with our present imbalance yeah, and how to come back closer to that original blueprint for health. What if I have one or two core uh, you can have definitely more than one. Usually there's no, one or two. You said it like uh, drawn to uh, the same element is drawn to the same element. Hmm. But if I'm drawn to the third, like uh, space to body. So you feel that the, your core constitution is one, but you naturally feel drawn yeah, to the opposite? Yeah, but my core is in space and air. And you drawn to fire. Because I seen you around, <laughs> I wouldn't say that I know you very well, but I would say I've seen you around. I would risk saying that you have a lot of fire. <laughs> Just saying that and your face got red. Yeah? There's a luminosity in you. Yeah? You're very strong in your convictions. <laughs> You do have quite a gift of fire, so I wouldn't say that. I'm not saying you don't have this. I'm just saying Maybe that I'm not aware of the fire. you definitely have a lot of fire. <laughs> so how does this help us on a day-to-day? -day? It helps us by well, every single master of every single tradition has said this thing: know thyself. It's really about that. Get to know yourself. Because once you know yourself, once you understand your strengths and your weaknesses, you now can make well-informed, intelligent decisions. Yeah. We're just giving some examples when it comes to yoga. Look, we live on an island where if you want to get into yoga, it's like a vast menu. If you're new to yoga, it's like, damn, where, what do I do? Where do I go? What to choose from? There's so much to choose from. Well, choose based on your elemental constitution, choose based on your individual needs. Okay. It's not about doing what attracts you, it's not about doing what's easy for you, it's actually quite the opposite. Do what's balancing for you, and very often what's balancing for you in the beginning is going to be damn challenging. But again, in the long run, that's what's going to move you in the direction of balance. So understanding and being able to apply these lenses I call these the five element goggles that you can walk out of this class and just at any time you just put your five element goggles on and you start to look at the world with these lenses. You can look at the plate of food and look, okay, these are my strengths and my weaknesses. Can I look at the five element module on this plate of food? Can I look at the business plan? See, what do I need? What do we need in our business plan? Do we need more structure? Do we need more sharpness, more focus, more intensity. Do we need to be a little bit more adventurous, take risks, be a bit more spontaneous? Apply this into a relationship. Do we need to define what we are? Do we need more space? Do we need more passion? Look into exercise routine. Look at any domain of your life and you can apply this five element module and understand what's going to bring me in a direction of health or in a direction of And at this point, I would, I would like to say that to me, health is not a destination. Uh, 
we're never going to get to a place where we're going to say, I made it, I arrived, I'm healthy, well done. It's a direction. Uh-huh. In that sense, this is why wind is really important, in setting an intention. It's a direction. Either you are moving towards health or you're moving away from health. And when you look at things that way, it's very difficult not to take responsibility for your health. Because all of a sudden, you realize, is this extra glass of wine <laughs> moving me towards health or away from health? Is this cigarette moving me towards health or away from health? This relationship, this job, this environment, this community, is this moving me towards or away from? Uh-huh. And you realize that every decision that you make has a direct impact on your health. So understanding your strength, your weakness is understanding your individuality. Once you have a good understanding of that, you can make well-informed, intelligent decisions. And when it comes to health, I'll say do that kind of important. Any questions, guys? So, like being healthy in terms of the elements, like being bad in every one of them, you want to have like a... No. no. <laughs> so, a state of balance doesn't mean that you have all the elements in an equal proportion. Unless that is your core elemental constitution. Meaning, that's the proportion of the elements that you were born with. So if you're looking, hope I'm not going to have too far with this. So in traditional medicine, when we want to understand tendencies towards imbalance or disease tendencies, we divide the elements like this. Space and wind is what is called vata in Ayurveda or vata in traditional Thai medicine. Predominantly fire with a bit of water is what we call pitta. And water with some earth is what in Ayurveda they call kapha, or in Thai medicine and Pali we call semha. Sem, Charlie, semha is mucus, right? Semha. Yeah. Uh, so while we use the elements to move towards balance, we use the doshas or the humors to understand our disease tendencies. Now we're getting a little bit out of the scope of this class. And, uh, and this is where I should be smart and stop and say, you want to know more? You should come to the weekly workshop. <laughs> because a lot of these cycles, then, we, they repeat throughout lifetime, throughout the year in terms of seasons, and even within the length of a day, there's these cycles that repeat. And the natural energy of the day supports a certain activity. So really understanding the elements is One, understanding our individuality, but then also understand our relationship with our environment. How we can actually choose appropriate action at the appropriate time. Harnessing the natural energy of the day where some of the elements are at its peak. For example, from uh, from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. This is where space and wind element are at their strongest. The qualities of these elements are predominant. If you've ever been in an ashram or spent some time in a temple, you know that this is the time that monks wake up. It's the best time to do spiritual practices. Why? Because now we are at the side of the spectrum, closer to that subtle realm. It's the best time to do pranayama, meditation. It's the best time to go to the toilet, have a bowel movement. (laughs) Then the second stage is from 6 a.m. till... uh, 10 a.m. Water and earth are at their peak. So this is the best time of the day to produce. This is the best time to be productive. Followed by the hottest time of the day, which is the best time to transform. It's the best time to have the heaviest meal because the fire element, the sun, is at its peak. Inside our digestive fire is also at its peak. But maybe I'm getting too ahead of myself. We can get into a lot more detail with these things. But if you can walk away from this class just with an understanding that there is one or two or three elements that we recognize as very strong in you. You recognize those qualities in you. Recognize that as your strength. Recognize that these qualities that you have in abundance is what you naturally have to offer and give the world. And in order to 
be able to offer, the, offer your gift for a very long time, you need to balance it. How do you balance it? With elements that have opposing qualities. So surround yourself with people that have opposing qualities. And we're definitely living at a time where we could really benefit from that. Creating a bit more space and surround ourselves with people with different opinions that don't have exactly our same mind frame. Mm -hmm. Surround, engage yourself in activities that are perhaps not as natural to you, but hey, if you're not uncomfortable, right? <laughs> a dear teacher of mine always says, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not learning anything new. So remember, like increases like, opposites balance. If you walk away from this class with that, I think you're already walking away with something really, really good. So if you if you have water, water is heavy, mm -hmm. uh, water transports, water is absorbent. Water, if you observe water in nature, if water mm -hmm. doesn't move, if it becomes stagnant, yeah. it starts to rot. Yeah. Right? So excess water usually translates as a sort of a, um, it becomes stagnant. Mm -hmm. So if blood is not flowing properly, if lymph is not flowing properly, it starts to become stagnant, it mm -hmm. starts to become toxic. What is the element that's going to move things? Wind. Wind. So wind is what's going to help that fluidity to take place. Because yeah. water itself doesn't move. It's wind that moves the water. So what is like a complete action of the wind? Depends, for example, if you just based on the words that you said, stagnant and what you say uh, uh, contaminated. contaminated so to me straight away what comes to mind is lymph lymph is the sewage system in the body okay? if lymph is not moving becomes stagnant that means that your cells are living in a toxic environment so lymph needs to move so two things move lymph diaphragmic breathing and muscular contraction so movement Going for a long walk, going for a hike. That's an excellent way to move lymph. <laughs> Beat yourself senseless. <laughs> you know, like this kind of qigong practices where you tap. This is a very efficient way to move the lymph. And while the blood, the circulatory system has the pump system, which is the heart, the lymph doesn't have a pump system. It relies on muscular contraction. The closest thing to a pump system for the lymph is the calf muscles. Mm -hmm. So again, walking, going for a hike, probably one of the most efficient ways to get that lymph going mm -hmm. and I would say make sure you do the hike during this stage of the day so somewhere between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. that would be the time to get that stagnation moving so again we could apply this into every single domain of our lives but because the workshop that we're going to be doing this weekend is, to the most part, related to body work. Um, can someone help me just move this inside? I'm going to need a volunteer, but someone that is wearing pants, please. <laughs> Keep this family oriented. <laughs>
So I'm going to translate these elements and their qualities into movement and touch. And I would like you guys to, as I'm going through these gestures, for you to shout out what element you believe that I'm, my movement and my touch is communicating. So how can we translate these qualities and convey the qualities of the, these elements through movement and through touch? So look, movement is wind, yeah? but I can engage in different qualities of movement. If I bring a more rhythmic, softer, connected quality to it, that wind becomes water. Yeah? Now, this is wind, <laughs> and this is going to communicate a different message to the nervous system, while this communicates maybe more water quality, soft, soothing, nourishing. This is more stimulating, aggravating, agitating. Now, there's no right or wrong. If she was walking in for a session, I said like, very big frame, the heavy side, dragging her feet, very heavy, slow, slurred speech, uh, expressing her needs in a really, ah, uh, I'm exhausted, it took so much energy just to leave the house and come to this session. I notice a lot of water and earth qualities. So perhaps I don't need more of this soft, slow. Maybe I want to shake things up. Mm -hmm. I bring more wind, more movement into a system already has a lot of stagnant water and rigid earth. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This is how we start to create a sort of non-verbal conversation using the elements and their qualities and creating balance. Why wind? Yeah. There's earth, yeah. gravity, slow, steady, linear, and stretching is wind, creating that movement in the fibers and the tissue. Combine elements, it becomes a little bit more. So what do you see? Wind. Why fire? Where do you see the fire? Stretching is wind. Twists are predominantly fire. But then there's spot specific points. I'm using my heel right onto the piriformis, which is a common troublemaker, and then earth using gravity. There's movement, but what? Look at the quality of the movement. It's circular, it's spirally, it's fluid, and it's slow. The moment I make it faster, it becomes a lot more windy. What element? Fire. Side. 
sharp, fire. intense, fire. 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 Why? Sharp. Yeah. Using a sharp part of the body that penetrates through the tissue, using those qualities of fire to be able to go deeper in the body. Usually a more intense experience. Sharp. Intense. Fire. Make it softer by using a softer aspect of the body and bring a different elemental quality. some water if I start pulsing. Space. That's okay. wind and creating some space, yeah. Earth, how can I make this fire? Mm -hmm. Sharper point. You feel the difference? Yeah. A broader point of contact, linear, sinking in using gravity, body weight. It's all earth. There's a quality of water as I use my hand to find that perfect fit, that perfect anatomical fit. We tapping into that adaptability of water. How can I shape this earth so it perfectly fits? this earth find a perfect fit then sink i want to make it more fiery sharp point of contact sharp point of contact That's it? Yes. Wing. And the stretch. The longer I stay, the more fiery it gets. <laughs> there is quite an element of earth as I'm creating. I'm using my body to create a structure that allows her to drop into this structure and then lock. That's earth. Open. Wind. Space. And the longer I stay here, the more intense it gets more fire comes into the conversation.
two questions if you have. So we're definitely going to be diving a lot deeper in the elements and experiencing the elements first within ourselves and then in relation to another. Then we're going to go into more detail into the tendencies of imbalance, which are the doshas. In a therapeutic setting, we use the elements to move towards balance. So we understand the doshas as the disease tendency, and we use the elements as the tools to, or basically the medicine. Yeah? Doshas are the disease, the imbalance, the elements are the medicine, are the tools that we use to move in a direction of balance. And in this particular workshop, we're gonna be focusing a lot in applying this medicine of the elements in, um, in a configuration like this, how we can bring the qualities of the elements in our body and then translate them to our movement and to our touch. Uh, we're going to look a lot into the cycles of the day so we can understand appropriate action at the appropriate time and then slowly, slowly gather a tool belt to move to the cycles of the day, of the seasons, of the year. Um, yeah, better, better equipped, better informed. It uh, doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you have to become a body worker, massage therapist, to apply these things. These are notions and little tricks that are very, very helpful to apply and family, loved ones, uh, very, very efficient, very applicable. Um, just good, good things to know and share. So yeah, this weekend we're going to be doing, it's a 12-hour training, so... Even though it's, it might sound like a lot, it's not. Uh, it's only one little bit of this body of knowledge that we can tap into, but five elements, three doshas, and uh, some body work routines that uh, we will use according to whatever you bring onto the mat. So if there's lower back issues that you have, that's what we're gonna be working with. If someone has neck issues or shoulder issues, bring that to the class, because that's gonna be a perfect example of what we can do in order to alleviate some of that suffering, discomfort, predicament. And, and what is the timing? 10 to 1. 10 to 1. 10 to 1. 2.30 to 5.30. Yeah. So three hours in the morning, lunch break, three hours in the afternoon. And uh, yeah, if you want to ask more questions about the weekend workshop, come and talk to me or Milenka. Milenka, can you make yourself noticeable? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it would be lovely to stay in touch with you. If you have a question or you want to stay in touch, leave your email and uh, happy to stay in touch with you. Uh, if you see me around the island, uh, yeah, come and say hi. I'd love to stay in touch. Thank you very much for showing up. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.